Welcome to the Wisdom Check by Tabletop to Keyboard. This is going to be our bi-weekly podcast where we discuss things such as Dungeons and Dragons. Actually, I think maybe we need to turn up my mic a little bit, guys. How about some more game? More game. This is the Wisdom Check. Intro to end all intros. Talk about dungeons, dragons, and kids. Now, now, I don't think that's proper. This is a family show, after all. This is the intro we can use, fellas. It's good, clean fun for everyone. Welcome to the Wisdom Check, where we have wholesome conversations about the dilemmas we face every day. Nah, nah, hold on a second. I got your intro right here. Yeah, that's better. Welcome to the Wisdom Check. When I'm right, just wrong, we're going to have guests on to talk about it. It's going to be awesome, because I said so. He is right. He did say so. I don't know. Is surf music the best music for a podcast about D&D? Fuck yeah. Okay. This just in, nobody can agree on our intro for this podcast, so we're just going to start. Welcome to the Wisdom Check. Roll for initiative. Fuck. A one. It's like every time. Welcome back, everyone. This is part two of our May 20th, 2019 interview with Stonefly Kai. And in our first half of this, we talked a lot about inclusiveness and in particular issues that are faced by women in gaming in general. And don't worry, Stonefly doesn't answer for every woman. It's just more of her personal experiences and they were really interesting. Now, if you find yourself liking any of what we're about to do today, please leave us a like, subscribe, share the video if you can, get everyone involved in the conversation, and of course, join us on our Discord, and we'll put a link in the description for you so you can get in there, ask us questions, possibly appear on our show with us. Now, today's episode is about voice acting. It's fun, it's hilarious, and uh, well, it's pretty embarrassing for us and hopefully really entertaining for you. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get you into the episode. I guess that this would be a good time to go ahead and segue into today's actual topic. We've oh God. Uh, done a good job of <laughs> discussing LARPs and everything else, but we got some voices. Oh, God. Oh, boy. So as <laughs> promised, I don't, wanna, I don't want to deny Clint his opportunity to throw us curveballs here shortly. So <laughs> I want to make sure we got plenty of time for all the curveballs he's threatening to throw at us. Yeah, and Shan, um, this is your opportunity. We're going to be uh, taking requests for types of voices or characters and what we think those voices should be and how to come up with a voice. So what I wanted to do to start out with, I thought, well, like, we'll start out with the easy stuff. Obviously, humans, you can do anything with. A human can have any voice that we have. You can use a normal voice. You can do any sort of human accent you want. Humans are kind of run-of-the-mill easy stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think... When you have a human, you're talking about what the character concept is, sort of directs what the voice is more than the race. But there's a lot of other races out there that I think it doesn't matter what your concept is. The race kind of dictates the voice more than whatever class system they are. Like if you think about like dwarves, like Levi does a couple different dwarves. He does like a Russian dwarf. He does like a Scottish dwarf. And those are two different like dialects of his dwarven. But um. So when you but you think about it, like it doesn't matter if it's a cleric or a fighter or a warlock, they always have that like gruff sort of sounding or whatever a voice, you know, mumble almost like Yosemite Sam sort of thing going on, right? Like they're always always some deep growly voice. So I thought we would start with some of the easier, just the normal races that you find in your standard fantasy games, oh, not just D and D, but everywhere else. So we're sure. gonna go ahead and let you. You want to start oh, out with. You want to start out with the skeezer voice to get warmed up, Jeff? You want to you want to pop into skeezer a little bit? You got a gnome? You can do gnome. Hold on, let me let me get into the mode here. I know. I'm like, wait, what is my voice on Dadbot? <laughs> Let's see, what's my usual get into character voice? Do your oh, hey, spell. Fulcrum. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was up here thinking about this, and it's sometimes you just have to talk really fast and I just really enunciate and just go up and down the scale, and uh, you know, get yourself a nice little musical sounding gnome. <laughs> 
Yeah, so that's, that's how I get into it right there. Is uh, There's one line <laughs> talking to Fulcrum. <laughs> Seems to work. <laughs> so, so now, do you, it, Fulcrum is your is your muse. You need Literally. Fulcrum to get into into skeezer. So, um, we, we better hope Tim never decides to <laughs> quit playing Fulcrum. You'll be you'll be lost forever. <laughs> uh, but, so, because because he's a gnome, there's different types of gnomes. There's rock gnomes. There's um, and what kind of gnome is skeezer technically? He is Does technically he have a, a forest gnome. He's forest gnome. So that's yeah, why you're otter. Morphe. That's why yeah. you have kind of the otter thing going on. So yeah. like when you decide to do Skeezer's voice, did you pick up anything from otters? Like, did you, was that just a coincidence that the picture looked kind of like an otter? You're like, Hey, he's an otter. Or did you pick that specifically? Or? How did um, we not know he was an otter? Your guy, is it your guys' <laughs> photo? Is he an otter? Your guys' art thing? Long kind of wispy white hair that kind of goes down. It's got a little like that yellowing to it. Oh, um, big eyes like basically the picture kind of looks either like an owl or like an otter like kind oh. of some weird mixture of that onto a goofy stick man <laughs> who's you know two foot tall <laughs> yeah but uh yeah you're right like i think looking at that character picture and thinking of gnome you know thinking of fake creatures whimsical and like gnomes in uh i don't know like cartoons and stuff like they always have kind of that you know head in the clouds kind of just all over the place. Yeah, porcupine a little bit. See, too. I yeah. thought he was more porcupine, but that was that was just me. <laughs> but uh yeah, so like those sorts of kind of concepts really played into Skeezer's voice for me. Uh, and, and that and his attitude in general is kind of a little disassociated with the world. So like it's more like, oh yeah, I'm in a I'm in a dream right now. So like, yeah, things happen in dreams. Yep, that's weird. Cool, <laughs> let's just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's a big departure from what I normally tend to play, I would say. Like, I'm usually kind of that stoic, kind of quiet guy. Or, like, the more just, like, straightforward, just, like, uh, I don't know, what would you say? Like, I guess Leon, the last campaign, was just more of a straightforward kind of... That's because he's human. Human. Yeah, well, true. So, see, when you're playing human, it's like, you don't really think about voice acting much when you're human. Unless your concept is really out there. Like, when Levi played Surly, even though he was, like, an elf... But because he was so heavy hillbilly, everything was like hick hillbilly accented, like in everything he did, right? So it was like that part became like a big core part of the character and his personality was more of the concept than the race. But it's so funny because with human, you think that's where that would have to happen. Mm -hmm. But yet at the same time, like most of the time when it's a human, like we just people just use their normal human, like with we're all humans, we just use our normal voices for it. And when they could be using the Ned Flanders voice. They could, right. <laughs> you have that option to bring that level of something to your character. So, like, I always try to encourage people to come up with something. You know, like, if you want to move from, like, those into, like, elves. Now, Kai plays an elf. You play an Eladrin, mm -hmm. a cleric. And you have a voice that you kind of do for for Makani. Mm -hmm. So, do you, can you get into Makani oh, voice? Do you, need to put the, do you need to put the ears on? Do we need to give you a second? Yeah, to get I need ears? to go get my ears real quick. Just kidding. Go no. for it. Uh, gosh, <laughs> it always takes me like a couple minutes to warm up and do So, it's I'm, all the pressure. Um, I don't even know what to say. Um, I don't want to I don't want to heal you. I don't know what to say. Um, <laughs> That's yeah, so that, is, that is exactly what she does. Though. Like, I'm yeah. not going to heal you, you stupid human. I know. I know. I love it. It, it. Go tell Lyft because I'm not going to heal you. So it's a little bit like Eastern European. Yes, it like, very comes off very Eastern European. Mm -hmm. Love it. So why did you pick that in particular for Eladrin? Um, it wasn't intended. I <laughs> intended to do something a little bit different, and then that first, yeah, <laughs> and then that first uh, episode we had, that's what happened because I was nervous and I was like, well, I guess I better stick with it now. <laughs> So. <laughs> so it was just by accident. Yeah, that's literally what happened with Skeezer's voice. I was like, "What? What the hell? Did gnome sound like?" And my voice cracked while trying to do. It. I was like, "Oh, no, I'm keeping it." Yeah, there it is. <laughs> right. So, like, there's like four different sub races of elf. You know, mm -hmm. Ladrin's one. So, like, if you were gonna play a wood elf, like Balrin, would you change the way your voice was gonna be any for Makani if she was a wood elf? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if she was a wood elf and I was intentionally doing the voice I wanted to do, I think I'd do something a little more airy and maybe a little higher up. So, um, mm. go down to the stream, probably something like that. So, oh, okay. So, okay. almost yeah. like a World of Warcraft elf. Kind See, of yeah. my, my Balrun voice is leans a little more towards his concept of pirate than his race. Oh, mm. But I always think mm -hmm. of wood elves as being more savage. They're just more mm -hmm. brutal. 
they're more straightforward. So I always kind of get more of a, but the one thing I think that elf has to have, no matter which one of the sub rate places of like sub races of elf you're playing is that they have to have that certain air of arrogance to them. They're, they're creatures who've lived a couple hundred years. Likely they mm -hmm. know more than you. They usually kind of feel like they're better than you already. You're maybe not worth their time most of the time. And Bowron very much has that going on all the time anyway, but <laughs> it's, it's, elf, it's Elf very much. It's, it's one of the reasons I picked Elf, though, for him, because I could have played a pirate as a human, or I could have played a pirate as a halfling, and you know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of ways I could have gone about it, but I was like, nah, man, he needs to be an Elf. He's got he's to gotta have you know this kind of arrogance to him. So I don't so much change my voice quite so much for Bowron as much as I think just his air of sort of confidence about everything he's doing, right? Like, mm -hmm. you guys are completely worthless why are you here get out of my way you know like it's just a mm -hmm. matter of like almost word choices more than an actual voice and it's those word mm -hmm. choices that really melt my heart <laughs> <Sometimes>. <laughs> can't help that you weren't born an elf it's our it's our natural affinity for eyesight that makes us better than you now go back over there and do something else why i figure out what we're going to do about the situation you know like he, he's not being necessarily mean he just is mean I think that's a good thing for new players. I've never even thought of maybe telling them that. Like, maybe just change the things you're saying rather than your mm -hmm. voice. I think word selection is just as important as mm -hmm. the voice that you're doing. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think of that a lot when I make characters now. And I think LARP really drove me to that. Like, Absolutely. playing Landon Kane as a gangrel. He was a teenage boy who was this who turns into a wolf, a bat, and grows claws and is very vicious. And so, like, as he lost humanity, like, I had to start growling more than I was talking. So, like, I started having to think, like, he's thinking more and more like a wolf as he loses humanity. So I had to start, like, acting more like an animal and talking more like an animal. And I tried to you scratch my like one. I moved yeah. like one. I tried to scratch my face with my foot. Like, it was, you know, <laughs> like, those are things I did all the time. Like, so I, I think in my head, like, I always Pretty think awesome. about my characters. Like, you know, when I played my Nosferatu, he was a, he was a preacher. And so he always had that very sermony voice going on. Every time he talked about anything, he was preaching to you. You was going to go to hell. And, you know, this is the other. He would carry these sermons, you know, and, very, and that very powerful type voice, you know, to him. So I think, but sometimes a lot of times what you're saying is just as important as how you're saying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, I spent a lot of time, uh, probably a lot more time thinking of how the character thinks and how they interact with people rather than their backstory. Like backstory, yep. it's useful, kind of, but really 99% of what you're doing is interacting with the environment. And so if you have a good idea what that is, everything else just flows. You know, mm -hmm. you can call back to backstory, it's fine, but you can always fill that in. But knowing right. what your character is like, what just like makes it so much easier. That's yeah, true. I go off personality a lot. Mm -hmm. Do I want to play a gruff player or do I want to play someone who's silly? Yeah. So. so tomorrow night I play in a burning wheel game mm -hmm. and I, and we are all dwarves and the burning wheel dwarves are pretty much like your standard fantasy dwarf. So when I was thinking of my play, he's my guy's like an engineer sort of, they don't have classes. You just get skills. And my guy has all the engineering skills. So um, when I decided I was going to do was I was actually modeled him after my, my neighborhood, uh, my neighbor, growing up his dad <laughs> awesome. his dad uh, it, jeff has been there he, he probably remembers uh chuck oh but, um he had coon dogs he was a hunter and he had these coon dogs and the coon dogs would start barking at us were in the backyard and he would walk out there you couldn't see him he would just stand somewhere on the back patio and he would just yell at these dogs and he would yell and you, he never spoke an actual word of english <laughs> except for cuss words and you could hear him just moving through the house when he was done yelling but it would sound a little like this it's like you know, them dogs say, shut the fuck up, goddamn motherfucker. <laughs> we'll back to the house, right? So that has become my dwarf voice for this dwarf I play on Tuesdays. So every time they look, so they, they look, his name's Griswold, and they'll be like, Griswold, what do you think? Like, oh, God, goddamn motherfucker. <laughs> 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 like, oh, fix a goddamn thing. <laughs> you know, he just trail off on everything he said, like, you know, like Yosemite Sam, sort of, like, you could never really figure out what it was going to do next, right? That's but, it's, but I find people like it sometimes in my life that I'm like, oh, I'll keep that voice in my head, and I'm like, someday. There will be some, a character that needs that voice. Some real beauts so. out there. Uh, Chat's talking about, um, uh, see, Lord Andrew again. Uh, he has a uh, front demon slayer. Apparently it was one intelligence point away from being a mute. So he created an entire dialect of common just for that character. That's, uh, that's a lot that's of work. Dedication. <laughs> that oh, my God. A lot of work. That's a lot of, that's a lot of time put into there. So that's, that's good stuff, though. It, was it just like different word choices? Was it actually 
uh, a different style of speaking? Like, what, what do you mean by a dialect? Because, I mean, that could be a lot of things. And that, actually, that's an interesting thing. You know, like the intelligence, the wisdom of your character really, I, I think, has a profound effect on, like, how you voice them. Or it, even really it definitely, I think word choice, again, comes into play a lot with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I would you say think of like Tom Hanks with Forrest Gump, yeah. like how he does Forrest Gump. Like you can't get that voice out of your head. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it's that voice is forever in your head. And yet it's like, in a lot of ways, it's a perfect voice for somebody who, ha- who's a bit delayed like that. Like it sounds mm-hmm. like you, the moment he does that, you forget he's Tom Hanks. Like you've heard Tom Hanks a thousand other times and you forget in that moment that he's Tom. Yeah. I mean, Obviously, you got to prepare for roles like that, right? Like, sure. And that's the thing we did for, like, I, at least I did for LARP. Like, I played Oleg Krilov, right? This I've talked about him in the past, but he was like a Russian mafia type character. Um, if, if anyone's watching this show on HBO called Barry, there's uh, Soko, Han- uh, Soko Hank or whatever his name is. That is essentially my character. <laughs> and so he had that voice. He was kind of a, a goofy, but like violent criminal. But like, I had it, I spent forever beforehand watching like i don't know um how to speak in russian accents videos so like yeah these like diction uh examples and like certain words and like what sounds got dropped and added at the end of and beginning of different words and i spent forever on that i don't know if it actually paid off or not dustin can tell me or one way or the other but i, I, I thought he had a, did a very good like eastern european accent <laughs> or maybe even Russian. It was like it sounded very from that region for sure. So it's been I have forever. a voice. Oh, I have a voice that I want to do for a one shot so bad that's like a super low intelligent character. I haven't played it yet, but has like a really, really bad list. Oh, and nice. I and I've never had the opportunity to play it. And it needs it just needs to happen. But like well, a maybe bard. right now is your chance. Oh yeah, let's hear it. A bard? Just, I wanna <laughs> play bard. bard. Okay, yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> I want to play a like a low wisdom bard or a low mm-hmm. intelligence bard. And I'm one of those people. I don't want to like m- my characters. I'm not necessarily worried about optimizing them. I want to play like a personality type, but I just want to be like, Hey, check key. You want to check face and stuff like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't had the chance yet. Like Can you imagine you got like a loot out. You're in front of a stage. Hey guys, it's time for us to party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go buy me a martini? <laughs> so. Now, how long do you, okay. You said one shot, but like, how long do you think you could pull this off? Like that voice forever. I do that. Like talking to my daughter and my dogs all the time. So oh, it's man. fine. That voice I could do all the time. <laughs> And I like purposely try to find words that have like I really like a slushy guy. Oh, just, so good, so good. <laughs> I haven't had the chance though. So there it is, word selection mm-hmm. specifically to in- increase the amount of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> remember the, it reminds me of the uh, movie Multiplicity. Yep, where he makes the copy of the copy, and, and so it's like every time you make a copy of a copy, it gets less intelligent than the previous copy. So like yeah. by the time they make the copy of the copy, he's like, "Dave, you buy me a monkey, Dave." Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you get a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Like, uh, yeah, okay. So uh, Lord Andrew was saying uh, his character. He, he did slurring words. He did word choice and avoiding difficult sounding words. So that's kind of like writing in our game, you know. Though right. he used words inappropriately, <laughs> so yes. like big words. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he uh, he did a uh, he would he would use words incorrectly. And then Brilliant. for fun, Clint would type the word in the actual definition in a chat for people that were watching. So I don't know if you ever caught on to any of those uh, Stonefly, but I haven't. I don't would. think I've seen that. Oh man! If you're You're watching the VODs, you he would he would do that occasionally. We we used to refer to it as writing's words. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he would say something. We'd all look at him like, "What?" And then we look over and say, "Yes, (laughs) perfect." That's so good. I really wanted to do like the like Pee Wee's Herman like thing, where it's like every time he says the magic word, like you know, like it come up on the screen, like ah. <laughs> they thought it might break people out of immersion of the game, so you know, oh, 100 percent. Oh yeah, so totally go with that for sure. <laughs> so, so I guess we should find out if there are any accents that people want us to try and butcher. Uh, are you gonna let Clint throw us a curveball now, dude? I have been dreading this for the last like forever. Has an addiction to Hobbit weed. 
A gnomish, gnomish tinker. tinker. Oh, he look, he's got an image. What? Oh man. Oh my god. <laughs> How about a gnomish oh, tinker that has an addiction to hobbit? I'm gonna let you go first. Who a gnomish tinker that has an addiction to hobbit weed. It might take me like a sentence repeated a couple times to figure them out. Just heads warning. Okay. I have no idea. Heads up warning. I I think the moment that you hit like addicted to like any sort of like a weed, you immediately think of like the stoner guy. So mm-hmm. in my head, I want to immediately flip to like kind of a high pitch like stoner guy. Like, hey man, you guys see my wrench anywhere? I see somewhere. Is there a wrench around over here? Can I find a wrench? Like he's, you know, like he's lost all of his stuff all the time because he's too busy hitting his water bong or something. You know, he may have literally lost his marbles. Um, I'm looking at this picture though, and I'm seeing like wide eyes. His mouth's like, you know, <laughs> I mean that's that's exactly right. And it looks like it's blown up in his face, right? Because he's left the shadow on the side. Oh yeah, it has. Yeah. So oh, I didn't see the picture till just now. Now so it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he's like bewildered, stunned, or he's an addict and like really like quick and edgy. Like looking at his shoulders are kind of tensed and up. So I'm kind of thinking more of like. Oh, guys, it's time to show you exactly what I got. I got this explosive device. Oh, shit. <laughs> I think, that was pretty good. That's pretty good. Like, I, think, I think sometimes when you're dealing with like the more common like races, mm-hmm. you have a tendency to draw from things that you've heard, either from like WoW, when you get uh-huh. into like the gnomes in WoW, or you get into how you like the half orcs. You know, like you, you pull into those things like for Lord of the Rings. Like it's really hard to think of elves without doing like your Legolas voice, you know, oh, like, sure. things like that. Like those things are so stuck in your head that I think that we, people have a sense to like pull from them. So like in my head, I can't do the voice, but in my head, I see that I immediately want to do the Tinker Gnomes from Wow. Like in my head, like the gnomes down in Nomragon, where you would find them. They like, ah! like the oh, the high yeah, pitch, yeah. like squeal, you know. I haven't played WoW, so I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Yeah, it's <laughs> probably better for it. <laughs> Years of your life you didn't waste. It's all right. It's... All right. Did did you come I, up with a? Uh, yeah, tinker? I think mine would be more airy and like hoops. Oh. And like, yes. <laughs> um, I guess this isn't a clock anymore. <laughs> so that was very <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Oh god, if I take her, it just exploded in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Oh, I took the drawing board off. Oh. <laughs> I think that's really what sells it. Is that, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, is I've always tried to do a Mickey voice and never nailed it until just now. <laughs> oh, and who would have guessed? All you knew was a stupid gnome picture. And the best part is, if we'd have been like, "Hey, do a Mickey Mouse voice," you'd be like, "I can't." <laughs> I would have been like, you "Don't know how to do a Mickey Mouse voice." Oh. Uh, no, I so, do. Uh, let's see. So one of the other voices I recently did, and I'll take over for a second while to give you guys here a second. Um, for my game that I'm running live that I just ran again yesterday, I sent the uh, party into a bog to find who was making a specific honey mead, and they came across a family of redneck bullywugs. Now, if you aren't familiar with a bullywug, it's a frog oh person. They're part frog, part man. They kind of, yeah, bullywug, like that guy there. Only you have to imagine with like the straw hat, and he's like a bullfrog, so he's like super big. How in the world did you have that picture ready to go? I gave him a list this morning. While we've been talking for for an hour, he's been finding pictures the whole time, I guarantee you. Awesome. So what I did was, is I decided for the voice for these bullywugs, when these guys would meet them to talk, that the head bullywug named Wilbur would be the guy who would do most of the talking. So he's the head of the family. And the, the mom, his wife, would like stand nearby with like a fishbowl with a tadpole in there, right? Like who like <laughs> pops up out of the water, like looks at them all and like pops back in, you know, as junior. Then he have some like, you know, more adult kids like hanging around the back. But he would talk and everything had to sound either like a rivet or a croak. Mm-hmm. Now, no matter what word he was saying. So I had to like try to intentionally think of like names that would sound like a rivet. So his yeah, name was like Wilbur. He'd be like, he'd be like. He, these guys betrayed them. The party did, of course, because that's what they do. So, you know, they'd be like, traitor, traitor. <laughs> Get out, traitors. Mead's over there. Mead, mead. 
Like everything was like a croaking noise like that came out of their mouth. So I do this and my players are just looking at me like he's lost his fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> like they didn't they didn't even know how to respond. They were just like, uh, he just did what? <laughs> I don't know. I know what he just said. Like I did this for a solid two hours. They're trying to have a conversation with the guy. Like they didn't even know what to do. It was great, but <laughs> so the one man show. <laughs> it was for a little bit. They just kind of stood there like, I don't know what to say to this guy. Like he's he's croaking at us. <laughs> I don't think they were used to that level of role play at the table. So yeah, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. So I, I do like that idea though. Like that, that kind of repeated kind of croak sound. Yeah. You know? so I, like, so the like other ones, mentality. the other ones that were a little like, you know, these like cheapy frogs. I tried to do like a cheapy frog for one of the other ones and I can't do those. Like the ones that go cheap, 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 cheap. Like I tried to get one that could do a voice that way and it didn't work as well, but I could do the deeper bullfrog voice. It's weird like that. There's certain voices. Like for me, it's dwarven Scottish voice. I can hear it in my head. I cannot make it like I try to do it. It is definitely never going to sound like a Scottish person, even remotely. It's embarrassing. and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> when I try to do Scottish, I always end up doing like India, like Indian. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> what is going How does on that happen? Here? I don't know. <laughs> so this is a good this is a good point for me to get the one that I put on the list for specifically for this purpose. Oh, so Rakshasha. Now, for those Rakshasha. of you who are familiar Rakshasha. with what a Rakshasha is, it's a. It's a creature from Hindu religion, which hails from that area of the world. There's a Rakshasha there. Um, its hands are built like backwards. It's a very mystical, magical type creature. Mm -hmm. But because it comes from that area of the world, do you feel like you're more inclined to want to give it an accent that comes from that area of the world? Like, if you think about this being a, a creature from Hindu, like if you think about like a Chinese dragon that you're going to voice, do you feel like you need to give it an Oriental sounding voice? Like, do you think about it in those sorts of ways? Like you probably haven't DM much. So maybe you haven't really thought about like, Hey, what does it, what does this dragon sound like that comes mm -hmm. from that looks like an Oriental dragon versus the European dragon, you know, like. Uh, but, for me, I, I mean, I know it comes from Indian culture, but I find myself seeing that image and seeing Persian. For some reason, maybe it's just the yeah. per part of Persia <laughs> goes in the cat face. But um, I find myself you wanting something like that. You, know, you think it's a fire. cloak and the boots like on that particular image makes you think that? Well, most of the images look like that, though, of the Rakshasa, right? So like in, in the true. game, they're uh, they're shape changing. So like they can look like anybody They get into like cultures and like high society and stuff and replace people and dominate the, the group. And then while they're secretly killing and cannibalizing people. Uh, but there's like always the tell of their hands being the wrong direction. But like when I look at them, I see like a, I, don't, I can hear it in my head. There's, I know this is not going to be a voice that's going to work, but like, okay, I'm going to have to come back to this. It's not working in my, I'm starting to make the sound. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> We should have had sentences that we could say. That's my thing. Yeah, I'm like, what do I even say? <laughs> Somebody put a sentence Levi, in the chat. Levi, pitch us, feed us a line, Levi. Feed us the line. You're an improv guy. <laughs> Risk it all. Risk it all. <laughs> do it. Just do it. I don't know if those are good sentences or not. <laughs> <laughs> telling us to do it. I don't think those are the lines. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, let's see. Um, Go for it, Jeff. What do you got? Because I'm going to get to a point here in a second that's going to be more of a discussion point. Yeah, we're going to have to try a couple sounds here. This is probably going to be awful. But, uh... Welcome guests. Welcome guests. That's so good, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's huh? perfect. Yeah. That's Boom. See, now, like, <laughs> Boom the, did the reason why I brought this up for a couple of reasons. One is, like, how would you differentiate a Rakshasha from a Tabaxi? Now, Tabaxi can have different types of of felines that they can be, well, you yeah, know, they're from, uh, from, it's a cat person from uh, Ravenloft. They're from the Ravenloft. You like, you, they, they are a player race that there's links, there's various forms of them, but they're essentially like, that's why Clint was confused. He's like, what, how do you do that different than a tabaxi? And for me, I think that there's a tabaxi there next to him. So mm. um, I think that if you're thinking about it, like I have a tendency, I think with tabaxi to think more feline mm -hmm. than I do cultural but yet with a rakshasha like i think what you hit is like perfect you almost hit a little bit of feline and a little bit of like that area of the world both like at the same time i think that's what you have to shoot for in that so that was good that was <laughs> I, I heard it in my head it was like this is not gonna work and then it did where it, 
<laughs> Whereas for like a tabaxi, I think more of purrs, like purrs and growls, like not so much like dog growl, but like, you know, like welcome friends, you know, with more of a growl to it than a, huh. than a European like type of accent because they don't, because those cats can hail from like, if you're talking like a lynx, it's like more Egyptian. So, you know, you have to think about like maybe sometimes where these things come from and cats give zero fucks. So they would be like, he wouldn't even say welcome. He would just be like. Get the fuck out. <laughs> like, pet me and feed me. <laughs> you pet me. Pet me with your eyes. You have not petted me. You have not petted me yet today. What are you doing? Yeah, you have not petted me today. <laughs> nice. See, like when I look at the Rakshasa, though, I see more of that kind of like, uh, like deep kind of growly, like tiger sound that obviously I can't make with my actual voice, but like the sound that you can feel coming from like the chest, you know, like that reverberation. You're going for Shere Khan. Yeah. Jungle Book exactly. Shere Khan is what you're Shere going Khan for. is exactly what I'm imagining when I see that tiger guy. Whereas, so it's in, sorry. I go. really feel bad when I do that. Do not. It's interesting to hear you guys talk about this because in my head, I'm like, okay, so what if this picture was a female one? Mm-hmm. Would your voice, like the voice in your head be different? Because you guys are saying this yeah. and I'm like, no, that's not at all what I would do. I know. I think it does. <laughs> like, yeah. And like you, you see it a lot, like with some of the, just the standard races, like when you try to do a female voice, like it's usually a little higher pitched. Mm-hmm. It's usually a little higher, a little, like a little lighter, you know, in, in the way that they talk, like they're not as growly. And yeah, I think I how you, when you all pause, done growly. when you pause between <laughs> words, you know, stuff like that, I think is mm-hmm. different. So would you go for more of like the, like the house cat, like me sounds? I know? think I would go for like, almost like a video game like like really quiet oh, how would i do that uh what was the sentence he had there he had, i have uh, prepared a dinner for your honor oh the, so something like that is what i would do i wouldn't even do growly at all so, i was thinking you were gonna go full-on Catwoman. oh like batman like, oh, no. like michelle pfeiffer Catwoman, right like she was always kind of the oh, my darling how are you doing oh, dar- you know, like a- darling something like that I don't know. yeah there you go roll the r's yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um her when you're thinking. <laughs> I don't know how to purr. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> there's other like there's other things that are less voice acting and more like role play as too. Like you think mm-hmm. it like um and we're gonna talk maybe a little more about this next week with our other guest because she does in fact play a tabaxi. So this is oh, one of the things I was gonna say. That's why it's but, like <laughs> it, it's on there, don't worry. But um happening just like think about things like how an animal acts like Mm -hmm. circle a couple times before it sits down Mm -hmm. when you describe things your character does you know you get that when you play one of those races you get to bring in kind of those animalistic attitude towards like how they go about doing other things too like licking themselves all the time or just you know rubbing their forehead you know doing those sorts of things that you can add into the role play (laughs) you know just beyond the voice even that's so interesting because I've never thought about like your character class being part of how you role play. Mine has always been personality and I've never, mm-hmm. and I think this is really good for me. I've never thought about that kind of stuff. So that's, that's really cool. That's that's why we thought this would be a good one to have you come on to do. Cause we yeah. feel like, I feel like you're right there at that point in your, your gaming <laughs> career. Where, like, this is things you can do, right? Yeah. I, I know. I'm oh, CR level 10. Gelatinous, okay. So he's throwing us a curveball. He wants a gelatinous oh, yeah. cube. And a goalie dwarf. Are- <laughs> <Last sandwich. laughs> I hate you right now. Okay, I'll, I'll be the awesome. cube. Wait, who is that? That's Clint. That's <laughs> coming up with these. That's why he's a got the images. Cube. It would be like I don't know Ooh. if a gelatinous cube actually makes a noise. Does it just? Oh, jiggle? oh it sure does. Oh. <laughs> 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 And then a guilty dwarf. Dwarf. A goalie dwarves are notoriously really dumb. Goalie dwarves. They're they. I don't even know. Like I was trying to think of the last time we've actually seen a goalie dwarf in game. It's probably like twenty years ago. We kind of quit. Lowest of the low society. (laughs) So the voice I do is a no reflection of any society. (laughs) But maybe do like a like I don't know. I don't know what a goalie dwarf it dwarf is. I immediately want to go to Billy Bob Thornton and Sling Boy. Yes. Yes. I want to be yes. like. Do you know what I do? Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> over there. Yep. Yep. Over there with my hand. Don't know what it is. Yep. 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 Over there. Over there. The, the, the notorious thing about goalie dwarves is that they only understand singles and plurals. So they only understand the numbers one and two. 
So <laughs> like there's either one of something or there's two of something. <laughs> like so one is one and two is any number two or bigger. So that's with, funny. We used to have a running joke all the time, like how many are coming? The goal would be like two. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I guess just the level of their their line of thought, you know. <laughs> Spud from Train Spotting. Wow. Okay. Oh man, I haven't seen Train Spotting in so long. I don't know if I could do Spud. Yeah, Cockney is really difficult for me. Like, it's funny. I, I like that voice. I can not do it justice. I'll tell better. you, if, if the next season hasn't come out yet, but after I watch a good three or four episodes of Pinky Blinders, I can do the gypsy Cockney uh, voice after, after some of those, but it, then in the, it's been too long since I've watched it. But after I watch an episode or two, I can do it for like their gypsies and I can, I can do it for a little while. Yeah. Somebody had said gypsy. What would you do for a gypsy voice? Oh man. I'd totally try to shoot for Brad Pitt on, um, uh, God, what was that movie? Called? I, think, I know what you're talking about. Oh, uh, give me a second. Oh man, this is terrible. Why can I not think of it suddenly? It's about the diamond. Um, oh, red. Snatch. Yes. Snatch. Oh. The movie Snatch. If you've never seen Brad Pitt and Snatch, it's like the best gypsy ever. You can't understand a thing he says. You have to subtitle him just to. Even just then, it's no him. good. <laughs> Even then, it's certainly no good. Like, it's so good. But, like, it's hard to role play that because, like, I had that problem when I play my dwarf on Tuesday nights on Burning Wheel. Like, because I grumble so much. Like, literally, the other players don't know what I've said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's, it's hard to role play with because they don't know what you're saying. Yeah. So what's your gypsy then, Kai? I don't know. All mine are sounding the same because I'm like, I don't know, so used to doing mine. But let's see. And as I look up in the corner, guys, as I'm like <laughs> thinking so hard, uh, come here, let me tell you my fortune. I don't know. All oh. mine are sounding the same, but well, something like that. Yeah, but see, I, I think it's because uh, the concept of the gypsy is specific to a certain culture, right? It's mm-hmm. the, the Romas, right? So, like, that's a very specific style of speech. You yeah. Know? I'm not sure if that's a technically kind of a culturist or not thing, now that I'm thinking about it. But. Well, that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of what I was going to get at with some of these, like, accents. Like, at what point, if you're trying to do a voice accent, are you dipping too much into the cultural, like, stigmas that come along with those cultural areas like at what point am i doing a bully wog hillbilly am i maybe like or at what point am i pushing the line too far do you think like because mm. i mean this is 2019 right like we're talking about doing like goalie dwarf like with a force or like a force gum voice but at what but at what point are you then pushing too close to actually like almost poking fun at people that are maybe slower like like, like that's my problem. Sometimes I have when I think about doing, like wanting to do a voice, like a real voice for something, is that if I'm pushing too far into character, yeah, away from character, like, and those are hard lines for me to sometimes figure out where I want to fall. Like, so I think I have a tendency to stay away from a lot of that voice acting sometimes for those reasons. Like, I don't want to come off the wrong way. I think it all comes down to like intention. Mm-hmm. If your intention is just to play a character, you're fine. If your intention is to make fun of somebody, it comes out as that. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I, I think, though, like uh, us as performers in this kind of format, you know, where we're on Twitch, I think we have to be a little bit more careful because obviously you have no idea who's coming in. They don't know what your intentions are, or how you're right. conducting yourself in general. So, like, if their first impression of you is like a stereotype, sounding thing that's probably not going to be good you know Mm -hmm. whereas i think if you know you're just sitting around a table with your your friends like everyone knows who you are and what your your thought processes are and that kind of thing and again it kind of goes back to earlier topics of um you got to know your group and like the social contract that you're all part of at that point Mm -hmm. if you're on board it's great if you're not oh like uh yeah like in laura for those characters that decided to play nazis like started using like right. head language i was like dude no i know that's you your character mine. but yeah no that's so, not some cool. things are just in bad taste like, yeah. and i think that's the thing like like it's for me like sometimes i just feel like i'm pushing too far i'm probably not because i'm conscientious of it mm-hmm. but sometimes i feel like i'm pushing too far so it's probably probably a good sign that i'm not but at the same time i i do have those concerns sometimes when i'm thinking about how i want to voice you know, different things, like how I mm-hmm. want to go about, like, I'll tell you, I, I never thought about what a bugbear's voice should sound like until I heard 
Reagan from getting dicey to his Australian bugbear. And now every bugbear forever in my head is Australian. It's Australian? It's so, yes. It's, well, he's from New Zealand, but he's doing an Australian accent. And oh my God, it is perfect when you hear it. It's so good. And now that is forever stuck in my head is what bugbear should sound like forever. Like every once in a while, there comes a voice that nails it. And that one was perfect. I was like, that's, that's it. That's how bugbear sound forever. Let's see what was this side. So uh, the chat is talking about how every good voice uh, actor says that their original voices are usually a bad impression of someone else, like a step off from a good impression. An example is Stimpy from Ren and Stimpy is one step away from Larry and the Three Stooges. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. I guess I, maybe I hadn't really ever thought about them being that close. I hadn't either, but now I'm hearing it in my head when I think about that. Yeah, I guess that's probably true. Uh, Clint says he wants to know what I had what I had in mind for Mind Flare. And I did pick Mind Flare and Illithid for a reason. Well, they're all psionic. There's tele, tele- That's an Illithid if you've never seen one. Um, the reason why I picked Illithid is for a couple of reasons. One, they don't have a mouth. They have like this maw of tentacles. So what I was originally going for was... It, Levi says, like, you know, whispery with long vowels. What I was going for was the idea of, do they even actually speak? I, I think by the book, they are purely psionic in I tel- they telepathic, are. so they don't actually speak speak. But, like, when I think of a mind flare, the voice I have in my head is kind of like that uh, reverse echo kind of thing. Where, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like a, like a Protoss almost kind of sounding. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of like, a, like an alien overlord, sort of. Yeah, a little bit, you know. See, like, I, I'm trying to think I, if I can actually do that sound or not. I without have, actually having an effect. <laughs> I have moved to a point where I think with something that, that that's that alien, mm-hmm. that I would almost just have it psionically just put images into players' heads more than actual speaking. Mm. Because it's so far removed from actual human... Because it, it it's in no way a human, so he, like it's I think, I think it just has that level of psionic like you understand what it means even though it's not using almost like a more of an empathy sort of like flashes of images in your head is almost more what I would go with it than actually trying to make that thing talk with those tentacles. It's pretty fascinating. I, I can get on board with that. Do you have a voice that you're hearing, Kai? When you see that thing, I think I, well I. You guys have such an interesting perspective on everything. I would have definitely tried to do a voice, uh, yeah. like a lower evil, what evil voice, lower breathy, probably. Um, would the tentacles have come into play with how it sounded? No, but I hadn't thought about the way people look or <laughs> people, creatures until tonight. So um, I would have done. Get me the orb. Something like that. Yeah, that is. That's that's, like that's that. almost like what Levi said. Like it's like whispery, long, like kind of owl sound in there. Parcel tongue, yeah. See, I'm looking at the image. Like they don't have nostrils, so like the nasal sound wouldn't be there if there was like a voice, right? So I think you're pretty much nailing it. So it's got to be coming out of the throat. And they don't have a standard octopus beak. Like octopuses mm-hmm. have like a beak in the center of the tentacles, so there's no clacking sound in there like you would get with like an insectoid creature, like like we think of like the clackons. You know, I hate them things in Moo, but you know, like they would have like a clacking noise, like what you would get from like Predator. Mm-hmm. You know, let's see. Like, right, give me a give me a sentence, chat. I want to try a voice for this. He's thing. got he, he's got one. Let's see if this works. This is very fun, by the way. I am enjoying this. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. having a good I'm time. Having a good time too. I'll be honest. I was worried about this. Because I have no idea how this is going to go. <laughs> it's gonna go anyway, yeah. I have no idea what I'm doing, but None of it's fine. Do, do you think I've ever voiced an illithid before? Hell no. <laughs> like, this is all new for a lot of us. Like, really, I was. We were joking about it earlier. I was like, really, we need to get Levi on here for this one because this is one Levi would be really good. Yeah, at. Yeah, for There's sure. Really voices. I would we'll make him do them later, but. Okay, here we go. Let's see, how do I do this? It's got to be like a reverse suck, I think. I don't know if I can make this sound or not without choking. Neil, you cannot stand against us. That didn't work at all. (laughs) 
<laughs> I can't do that either. That's yeah, like, so hard. I feel hard. like I choked. <laughs> on, a, on a second look at him now, like I see like the Hydra symbol and I want to go like Nazi Germany. <laughs> I want to do like Red Skull in there, like Hugo Weaving's like Red Skull. Oh, yeah. You know what I know that just failed? It's because I took a deep breath first when I'm going to be sucking in air. So let me try that again. <sighs> Deal. You cannot stand against us. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. God, that sucks. <laughs> Don't do that for more than one sentence. Short sentences. <laughs> and then he goes immediately into psionic link, and you start getting actual common <laughs> fed to you in a normal voice. <laughs> uh, that's Davy a- Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, Davy Jones is another good one because he did have the tentacles for. Yeah. Uh, you know, to contend with. So I didn't see the movie though, so I don't know what that sounded like. Yeah, well, you have to check it out. That is that is actually not a bad. Uh... <laughs> yeah, real nice as shit. <laughs> so yeah, no, that is a good one. But yeah, that's that's one of the things I was thinking about. Like, I think people, like I said, I look at a lot of like how they're how like they're how they speak. Mm-hmm. You know, like in this case, since you have something that's psionic, how often does it ever really talk? You know, like I would have suspected it would only turn to that voice if it failed some sort of attempt to psychically link with you to begin with. So I would mm-hmm. think you would have almost like two voices. It would have like its learned common broken dialect speak, and then it would have like its actual voice that it might have to try to use if it if it fails to get in your head if you pass your save and it can't make mm-hmm. established contact. Then it has to turn to that sucking like you know voice it has to try to do so i think if you're going to use a creature like an illithid as a dm it's not a player race by any stretch of the imagination oh um, god <laughs> you know you you have that situation you know and then if you go make him undead you make him an illithid then you have to really hollow that thing out it almost it almost doesn't become illithid anymore and it just becomes a uh it becomes an actual undead at that point you get that very um underworld type tone yeah and i think what's interesting specifically about this sort of creature right he's an He's an aberration. So, like, aberrations are meant to be alien, you know, like non, like human mindsets. And since they're so psionic and just weird and about domination and, you know, not seeing other entities as having their own agency, you know, like, that's such an alien mindset to get into. Like, I think just thinking through that mindset really creates the voice, you know, like, how would something like that try to communicate with you? It knows it's more brilliant than you, but in a different way than you would be smart. You know, right. and it doesn't care about what you think. You know, yep. it's alien, but it's not really. I mean, it's evil, but it's not like the classic type of evil. You know, it's more of like uh, an indifferently evil thing, like almost like a cool. predator, or like xenomorph kind of scenario, where it's just like I'm just here as a force of nature, gonna yeah. mess you up. Clint, you know, was telling us to get on with it. He moved on to the next image. The, Lux- the Luxodon now. For those of you who don't know what Luxodons are. I don't know what that is either. <laughs> they come from Magic the Gathering. So oh. Kai might recognize a Luxodon because she's been playing Magic the Gathering. So. I have been. So you've maybe seen one of these. They're probably in your <laughs> green deck somewhere, if I had to guess. The green decks probably have the Luxodons. I don't think I have one yet. I haven't one. picked one. Of I think I've been there. defeated by a couple. They are an elephant <laughs> man of sorts. Elephant person. Well, I got some ideas of what I think this should sound like. I feel like it has to have that elephant blowing out of its snout sort of sound when it talks. It has like it has technically a mouth back. under it. Yeah, it's gotta it's gotta talk in those long it's gotta talk on those kind of long blowing sounds, you know. I automatically am like, oh, like an older woman, like wise sounding. So it's funny because I was like, no, like I don't know. It's just interesting. I'm learning so much. Well, I'm loving this other perspective, though. Like, you know, like, because there are significant differences between, like, what I jump straight to and what you jump straight to. I think it's freaking awesome. Like, you were saying, like, kind of like an older woman. um, Like, are you thinking, like, a grandmotherly type? Yeah. And, like, like, you know, wise, very thought-out responses. How do they sound? Let's, yeah, let's, let's hear it. You're up this time first. Oh, uh, I'm up first. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm up first. Oh, no, no, you go first. Yes, yes. I would say slow, deep. Is that? Yeah, that, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. slow cadence to it. And you need elephants, another elephants are so elephants. I think in these, I think they get it too. Are symbols of like wisdom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think they get a plus two to like their wisdom score already. So I think like you have to kind of bring that like 
wise like and that's where i think like maybe like your grandma kind of idea kind of works like because it's somebody who's older and wiser like i think they naturally get that so let's hear it uh, i need let's a try. second what let's do you guys go let's, first? let's make it non-eastern european this time <laughs> yeah, <non -Eastern laughs> no pressure <laughs> no pressure um if you want to take some time how would my gra yeah what if you guys go i gotta think about it um yeah how so would my I, grandma sound <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I think there you have to take into effect its its structure, right? So like the the huge nasal section of its head probably plays into it. Um, I do think the slow is an important part. I don't know if I can do both. Um, let's see. Uh, looks like Levi's taking off. Um, yeah, thanks for coming, man. I appreciate you checking us out. I know it's a late night for you. Let's see. Just got to finish up that school year strong. Yeah, um, pitch me a sentence, guys. I, I got to have something. So I'm, th to say. I'm thinking like like you've come to the right place. So like in you've my head, right place. I okay. think the you gets like the elephant like nose blow sound, like you, and then like <laughs> after that, like he goes into like his deep like grandfather voice, like come to the right place. <laughs> it's almost like a caterpillar from like the Alice in Wonderland kind of take. Yeah, right? so he gets that like blue sound like that. You know, I don't know if I can do the sound right, but like I think like anytime you have those long sounds, you have to get that like like sounding like like Let's elephant see. snort or whatever it would be called. I don't even know what they call. It. Yeah, a trumpet. I think is what it's called. A trumpeting. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. maybe what I'm looking for. Uh, let's see. Uh, what was the sentence at that I saw earlier? Um, somebody wrote it down. Where did I? I just read it. I thought. No, you said it. That's where I heard it. That's it. Um, I think it would be something like, "You come from the right place." You know, like something big like that, like big yeah. bodied. Sounds uh, sounds a little torn from Wow. Oh yeah, it's got it, a little torn in there. Is where I hit with that one when you did. Was like, oh, that's intentional? Torn. Was it intentional? But I mean, they no. do kind of have that same sort of because torn, you know, is like a minotaur, which is another one I had on the list. Like, is that same sort of deal, right? It's got a big snout. You know, they're they're a, a part bull, so you mm -hmm. know, you're maybe you're not too far off in that same sort of deal. But it's tough, man. <laughs> yeah, I've tried to think of like an old lady voice that doesn't sound like stereotypical, like old lady. Like, go with it. Where's my cane? Yeah. <laughs> Where's my cane? Uh, what did you say? What was the sentence you said? I, I botched a sentence that was supposed I said, to be. I, you, I, come... you, you have come to the right place. <laughs> you have come to the right place. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> But that's nice. very much like the old lady weird thing. So <laughs> yeah, but it had kind of like a little bit of a, like a trumpeting kind of screech at the ends of yeah. some of the words. It brought it all in there. It was nice and tight. <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. Uh, so like, you travelers have come to the right place, but at the wrong time. Yeah, I dig that. Yeah, that's a good sentence. That, that lets you play with it a little bit. That's good. You, you care to I give your it. trumpet another try there, Dustin? <laughs> On that sentence? I can't <laughs> hardly do it, man. I'm trying. That's why I'm, I'm you failing say. horribly, but I'll try one more time just for you and the viewers. I think it. this is fun, too, because it's like, as a new player, being like doing voices is one of the most intimidating things. And it's like, okay, everybody can't get it right the first time. I, I fail at all my voices for like the oh. first game or two. <laughs> I've, been I working, recently... I've been working on a goblin in case Bauer and dies, and I got my oh, goblin down. I'll my goblin later, but... voice is my favorite. Yeah, I think everybody's goblin voice is their favorite Your voice. Favorite, yeah. <laughs> we may have to do one of those. But so, right, Justin. one more time. It'd be like, you have come, travelers have come to the right place, but at the wrong time. <laughs> yeah, dig it. I thought oh, it was yeah. pretty good. That was good. It was nice. And then he's got to stomp because, you know, <laughs> stomp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like an interesting it. picture. Like, that is not a st so, you know, kind of typical race you would see. Like, it's got yeah, a very weird Again, style. this is um, what the reason these races exist now, if you go on to like point build, mm -hmm. like it, the one I use has these races listed, is because D&D &D just put out the Ravnica book. Which oh, is the yeah. world of Magic the Gathering. So now all these races are now listed as like player races. So the Vettelkin, the 
Luxodons, like those are now player races for D and D. If you have a homebrew world, you can pull them out of Magic Gathering and put them into your homebrew world if you wanted to. Oh, that's a good sentence. Maybe we should say yeah, that. Yeah, that is a good sentence. Do you want to use it for the elephant guy, or you want to go with something different? Let's go to the next do one. Some different. I like that sentence, though. That's nice. Let's see what image Clint has pulled next. I gave him like a list earlier, but I don't know what he's. If for those he's got of you more. For those of you watching but not reading the chat, uh, Jerry C put this relic here. You have an eye for the unusual, indeed. So we'll see what what our random picture is going to be here. I mean, I guess we could do goblin. Do, do we lose Clint? Got a compliment. Hot, um, hot Chantel um, loves your uh, loves my your top. top. Thank you. Oh, is that a goblin? <laughs> that it, is definitely a, a goblin. Go- it's a goblin. Perfect. Who wants to go first? All right, I got my goblin ready because I've been working think- on it. Okay, you go first. Yeah. I need a drink of water first. I was gonna say I was thinking the exact same thing. I was like, water. Was, okay, let's let's all do this. Goblin is goblin is always like very high. It's strained. All right. Oh yeah. So, hey, guys. Hey, guys, over here. Look. Look. I got this guy here. We're going to stab him. We're going to stab him real good. I don't like him. I don't know. What do you think about him? I talked to my 27 other brothers. They don't like him either. So we decided we're just going to stab this guy. We're going to stab him, and we're going to hide. We're going to hide real good. We're going to hide over there somewhere where you won't see me. Nope. And then I'll sneak around over here. Doop, 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 and then I'll stab him. I'll stab him, and I guy. Stab him so good. <laughs> That's, That's really pretty good. good. I like that. All right, Snowfly, you're up. All right. Lurk! Lurk will stab him, too! I'll, I'll go get the other dagger, and I'll stab him with your stabbing, and, and then we'll hide! Oh, my God, that's good. <laughs> that is really good. That's got, like, a little bit of schmeagle. <laughs> it does, yeah. I love it. Schmeagle in there. <clears throat> I'm going to try the sentence here. Let's see. Um, uh, this relic here. Uh, that's not the voice I wanted. Let me try again. Um... He's going to depart from Skeezer. He's going to slip into Skeezer. I, I, I am really He's doing it hard. Depart from Skeezer. Uh, let's see. How did I do That's that? me going back to my D&D character, my yeah. dad bod character. I just can't stop. I got to try Splug again. Let's oh, see. back to Splug. How did he sound? It was very, it was an attempt at a Cockney accent, and it was a failure. <laughs> um, this relic here? No, it's not it. I, I am totally botching this. I kind of uh, remember Splug. I can't do Splug. Like, I don't think I can do Splug. Ah, you have an eye for the unusual indeed. This relic here? Oh, oh yeah. I'm going to go ahead and get this for you right now. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to the front. And you're going to like it. You're going to like it a lot. Yeah, yeah I like good. it. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was Splug. That was, that was you, you, you kind of slipped back into Splug there finally. It yeah, good. it was It was tough. I, I, I it's weird. Like we haven't even been away from that game for very long, and like that voice just fucking gone. Hey, six months. It's been <laughs> yeah. Six months, man. So, yeah. What's interesting is like the the difference in your normal speaking voice to a character voice. You know, like what we're naturally able to do. Like, yeah, like you only have so much range. You, you know. know? <laughs> it's like your normal cadence of your speech, like because everybody has a different style of talk. You know, like. Dip, dip, seems to be like regional even like uh the pauses after somebody finishes talking between that and like when you start talking which we run into a lot now with uh you know online stuff you know like if you're in the south you know if you grew up there they have these huge pauses after sentences so like one person will say a sentence and then another person starts talking you're like oh i was uncomfortable or like you know, somebody from- <laughs> Uh, but somebody from like New York, right? There's no gap between one person talking and the next person. And like the mismatch is really just like pretty bonkers. I think I have to pull that into characters a lot of times, you know, like stepping on somebody else's sentences all the time. If I want that kind of attitude, like the goblin or like really yeah. hanging back and letting it open up for other characters. Mm-hmm. See, like we're doing it right now. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. One of you guys. Oh, I was just thinking, can you guys do like a Boston or like a New York accent? Because I, I can't. Oh man, that's I can't I would do slip Boston. into like Wisconsin. I want to do Boston so badly, but I don't even know how you train yourself to do that. Yeah. Like, without yeah, living that, there, I that's a hard one not to just butcher. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Clint has pulled up the next image that I had sent to him earlier, the Etten Giant, Ooh. which is interesting because oh, yeah. it has not one but two heads. <laughs> so 
This is who needs to fight over the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sandwich fight right there. One stomach, two heads. I'm going to fight over who gets to taste it, though. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh... You know past this tree. This tree is ours. No, this tree is mine. Mine, too. Fight ensues. <laughs> That's so good. I don't want to do anything because I was, like, perfect for it. <laughs> See, I, I like to think that, like, one of them has, like, a drastically different voice than the other. I was going for it. Failed. <laughs> so I could go for, like, the one guy. He's like, the this stick is mine. And he's like, I don't know, man. Why do we got to have the stick? Can I go ahead and get the stick? No, you had the stick last time. <laughs> like, they're just drastically different from one another. Like, one's clearly, like, maybe more the brains of the operation. It's Imagine. almost like Pinky and the brain all wrapped into one into <laughs> one giant, you know? I was seeing, like, a curly running oh. around in circles on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Narf, brain, can I hold the stick this time? Narf? That's funny. No, you silly fool. <laughs> it's my turn to have the stick. <laughs> this character is like very much off the picture. It's like, oh, it's a deep voice, and I'm automatically like, I can't do that. Yeah, oh, everyone's got it's doable. Voices, like, you got to really get down there to get low. You know, it's hard. <laughs> you just got to like really be uncomfortable. That's the secret. Like, I want a bologna like, sandwich. <laughs> hey, is that your Boston accent? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. She did it. She was a trap, but she slipped right into it. That was us. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was pretty good. Hey man, I got these cheeseburgers. This the guy at the <laughs> gas station we used to go to. <laughs> Can't do it. Like show up at the gas station, like, man, I got these cheeseburgers, man. This is straight amazing. <laughs> do you ever remember listening to? Um, this was like back when CDs were more of a thing, but uh, the Jerky Boys. Yep. When they would do the prank calls to people, and mm -hmm. one of the characters they would do was uh, like Frank Rizzo, and he was always this like. I don't know if it's supposed to be Boston. I think like it was more of like a New York accent, you know, but he was always like, it's like, yeah, hey, it's Frank, Frank Rizzo, you know, like, <laughs> and this guy, he's up on the roof. I had to toss him off there for being a fucking jerk. Like, <laughs> it was like, it was like, that. like, you don't ever see that coming out of a creature like that, though. Like, that's not a voice that you get out of him. No, there's too much body on that one. Like, yeah. maybe if you take that Etten and you think like he's been like brought into like, um, some sort of like mafioso like crime family like he's like the brute mm -hmm. and so like they imagine him in like a tuxedo with like two necks and like two neckties <laughs> and got him like standing in the corner like arms all crossed like he's the bouncer maybe then you give him some sort of more of an accent like that you know like really going against type you know yeah like, like you really go really dirty. against yeah you gotta throw a real curveball at that thing to make it do anything like, other it than like, out, like a super intellectual Right, yeah. Like, <laughs> he's got like uh what's his name uh from uh Frasier. <laughs> like the, the actor I can't remember is uh ah, never mind. The, I lost that? you. I lost yeah. you, I don't know what you're talking about. The actor that played Frasier, what's his name? Oh, um Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey Grammer. Like if you had Kelsey Grammer's voice for the Etten. <laughs> oh, Jerry C fed us a line. The exchange could be me want to crush you. You crushed last time. Now my turn. Not fair. You always crush for. I feel like we have to just have two of us do the voice, right? Like each one of us has to be like a different voice. Yeah, yeah. So like, how about Dustin <laughs> and Kai? So you, first voice is Dustin. Second one's Kai. Okay. Sure. Let's rock it out. Me want to crush now. You crush last time. My turn. Not fair. You always crush first. <laughs> that's because I'm the smarter one. Would it be cool to have two people play one character that happens to be an Edden giant? Dude, that would be yeah, amazing. yeah. See, crazy Ike's on the same wavelength I am. Like, we, like make one single sheet and then we both just fight over what we do every round. <laughs> Each of you controls that one arm. So awesome. <laughs> but the body's the same, so you have to decide where to go together. We have to, we have to roll off like perception versus like deception checks against each other every round to take an action. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Uh, uh, we'll just throw that if away. we both we'll die at the same time, let's later. do that. Let's if, do that. The next, the next time one of Levi swinging like beetle traps hits me and you, and we both go down. That's what we're doing. We're making an Etten as our character. We're gonna I'm totally on board. This. Levi would totally let us too. It's a shame he already had to leave for the night. He would so be mad that we didn't come up with that already. <laughs> Kodo refuses to heal everyone just so that character happens. <laughs> <laughs>
Now, are there any other voices that you're you're thinking yeah, of in your head that you're just like you try? Yeah. not getting? No, no. <laughs> I always like when I'm playing around. I always do like the Wisconsin, like you know, Canadian <laughs> voice. But see, this is this is an interesting thing because I play in an MMO guild where we play on we talk on Discord to each other. We don't we don't have cameras. We don't see each other or anything. You know, we're just talking while we're playing. I didn't realize I have apparently a hick accent. Oh yeah, we all do. But yeah. Everyone else, everyone else has informed me that I have a hick accent. I'm from Illinois, so I'm not that far mm-hmm. from Wisconsin. So I don't think of myself as sounding that much different than somebody from Wisconsin. But then, like, I hear someone from Wisconsin, and I'm like, okay, I do sound different. So I don't feel like I have mm-hmm. a hick accent. But then they're like, no, you totally got a hick accent. I'm like, Damn we it. grew up awful close to Southern Indiana. Like there, there's a lot. Like if I go back to anywhere kind of rural. I slip into real role voice and it's really shocking. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Now my sister, she's yeah, from here. Yeah. She moved down to Tennessee and she's been living in Tennessee, Nashville for mm-hmm. like 10 years. And when she comes back up, she's got that Southern twang now. Like she has. Mm-hmm. So it's it, always interesting. It is yeah, do you guys have any voices that you like use or want to use? Hmm. Man, like I said, I got my goblin down in case anything happens to Bowron. I haven't really, I usually don't go too far ahead in my, my lines of thoughts. Like the voice honestly is kind of like, it ain't the, it's not really the first thing I come up with. It's kind of maybe the last thing I come up with. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Let's see. Um, Me too. Oh, hey there. How you doing, fella? <laughs> yeah. You want to go ahead and just go on this adventure together, I think. Uh, <laughs> you want to go just chilling around here? I can see this is like a bear. <laughs> yeah, or like a moose. <laughs> Me there. Are you guys gonna go ahead and go to the dungeon? <laughs> <laughs> so good. There, there used to be a bear race, the Urson or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, you know, you just gotta bring yourself some potions, don't you know? It's gonna be very dangerous down there. Don't you know? Yeah. Make well, sure you put out your fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are pushing at a quarter till midnight here so oh geez that time we are fast. yeah so i think it's a good time here to go ahead and uh wrap things up for the night um no. once again we would like to thank our guest stonefly kai for coming on here with us thanks for inviting um, me having thanks. a lot of fun here with the awesome. voices being our first and and bestest fan yeah you know, og the og viewer <laughs> new emojis of incoming so why don't you <laughs> yes. take a moment and tell everyone uh what you're working on and where they can find you um, I'm stonefly underscore Kai on Twitter and Twitch and on Instagram it's stonefly and then dot Kai. Mm-hmm. And I do art streaming, D and D streaming on dad bot's channel. Um, and then Scraticus and unmade gaming right now, just for the season. And I'll do some magic on my Twitch channel. So those are all the things I'm involved with. Art. I do some wildlife art and character art. Can you show us some of your art real quick? Is any of it like easy accessible? Yeah, he's, back he's got a couple pieces behind right now. Yeah, yeah, nothing's like easy accessible. There's like, you know, the wolf back there and stuff, so cool. but they're so big that it's hard to like, hey. Can you like tilt your camera? Oh. I'm, I'm really pushing my luck here. Yeah. I, I'm, the one above your head looks really awesome. I'm trying to see it in a little more detail. There. Oh, man, that's cool. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. The elk. Yeah, yeah, that is really cool. I like that a lot. Thank that you. Is, yeah, you're welcome. Now, now I'm crooked. Now we gotta get <laughs> back on the camera here. <laughs> We've gone up and done it now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely check her out. Like uh, I saw a little bit of you painting one time, and like you know, it's really, really like just Thank fun. You. Like just Thank chilling you. there, talking all that stuff. So great yeah. work. I've been I've been catching mostly her playing Magic the Gathering mm-hmm. and watching the struggle that is real. <laughs> of trying to play magic together because what we do is we start chatting with her and she starts talking to us and not paying attention next thing you know she's down like 20 to (laughs) 8. you need to defend and she's like oh i'm so bad i messed up (laughs) oh hey look uh clip pulled up some of your artwork here to show off so he's oh thank you they're on screen for you so you can see some of her wow oh all that awesome stuff it's pretty amazing hey that is all my stuff (laughs) <laughs> Clint's resourceful like that. You give him five seconds of boom, man, he's on it. So yeah, thank you for that. Wild guy. Uh, Jeff, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you? Sure. Uh, I do a lot of let's plays these days. Uh, so I'm currently playing a lot of arc survival evolved. We do a particular type of uh, gentlemanly combat on the gentleman's arc ran by Vox Sesto. 
And you can find my content at Rain Survives at Yahoo. Or not <laughs> Yahoo. Uh, YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is where I actually do stuff. Uh, so check me out there. And then Dustin. All right. I am Dustin. I'm the player of Bower and Heros. You'll find me here on TT2KB for the Wisdom Check every Monday, 10 p.m. Central Time. You will find me and Jeff and Levi, the DM, Clint, Tim and Cam playing Everstorm this Saturday. Oh, Saturday, yes. Saturday, Saturday, 9.30 p.m. Central Time-ish, because we never <laughs> started right on time. <laughs> but we never do. It never fails. We get in the Discord and yap, and we look at, oh, we're late, and we start... <laughs> We start, you know, trying to get things growing. And if, if, if just once on a Saturday, our tech wouldn't fail us, not mm. Clint's fault, but just the internet in general wouldn't fail us, we would have much better shows for, for that. So we're hoping to get that stuff resolved. We've got a big fight coming ahead of us here. Yeah, this this week is going to be brutal. You might want to tune in. This may be the last time you see some of these characters. You Very likely. <laughs> Not, you, my character is very likely going to die. Like it's bad. Wait, did you say when? It's Saturday. What time? Saturday, nine thirty p.m. Central Standard Time. So that's like eight thirty your time, your Mountain mm -hmm. Time, right? So, yeah, Mountain. Awesome. Um, you can also find me at Plague State, all one word, where I'm known throughout the MMO community as Gladius Rex, where I torment people in MMOs by killing them and taking their stuff, <laughs> um, and in general doing some PvP. Uh, you can also, like I said, if you are following us on Twitter at TT2KB, if you're in the Facebook group there, you can see it on the screen, facebook.com slash TT2KB. Or if you're here um, throughout Twitter and you come across TT2KB up in your chat, it's probably me. Not necessarily. Just got access. Clint has access. So do mm -hmm. the other guys, but we're, I'm the one usually in there. So oh, that's where you can usually find me. If you have missed part of the content or previous episodes, we have been actually storing them on our uh, YouTube, not Yahoo, YouTube account for TT2KB. And you can go back and watch the Wisdom Check 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and we're breaking them up into halves so like they won't be these huge epic things. You can kind of bite-size them out a little bit. Now I'm going to try to release them on Tuesday and Friday nights. So you can look for them there. So a live one on Monday night, then Tuesday and Friday we'll have the replays. And you can always go back and watch whatever you want on there. It's nice. excellent. Awesome. And just before we go, <laughs> next week here on the Wisdom Check, we're going to have Navaria from Navaria TV here. So very cool. You know who Navaria is? You should give her a follow. On Wednesdays, she plays Curse of Strahd. She's the Boxy Ranger, and she comes actually from the MMO community. She plays WoW. Nice. And so we're going to get to talk a little bit about what it's like for somebody who comes from the video game side of things into TTRPGs. So you don't want to miss next week. It'll be Memorial Day, 10 p.m. here. You'll find us talking with Navaria. So excellent. Yes. Looking forward to it. Always great guest. Yep. <laughs> so thank thanks you for much. coming in, chatting, likes, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll catch you next time. Catch you next time. Bye.